Welcome back, ready to get going again. Hopefully you enjoyed the first demo where we looked at the 538 ELO based model for how they predict uh, the favorites and at what probability they predict that team will go on to win. As we saw, it's pretty hard to predict who's going to win a baseball game. I think the average was about 56% of the time or so. The favorite actually went on to win the game using that ELO model. And one of the things that I think is really cool is that because the ELO model is a probabilistic model, like a lot of the political models that 538 and more sites are using these days, it gives you a probability that a team is going to win. They don't just say this team is the favorite, but they say this team is a favorite and we think they're going to win 55% of the time. And so because there's such a long arc of history in baseball data, we're able to go back and look at all the games that had a 55% favorite and then say, how often did the favorite actually win 50, when they had a probability of 55%? And lo and behold, it's about 55%. So I would say that's a good validation. As we kind of looked out at higher probabilities, what we actually saw was that 538's model was a little bit conservative. This tells us that, you know, when they say that it's a maybe a 55%, that maybe it's actually like a 57, 58% chance that that team is going to win. I think that's pretty good. So that's one based, one model, relatively new, uh, this ELO-based model that was originally developed in chess that takes into account kind of the prior history of the team's uh, record. As I said, um, prior to about a week ago, uh, the Brewers, Milwaukee Brewers, were actually ahead of the Cubs in the standings, but according to the 538 model, the Cubs were by far ahead of the Brewers. Now, the Cubs went on like an 0 for 5, or I'm sorry, the Brewers went on an 0 for 5 tear, uh, getting shellacked by the Pirates last weekend, and they've now fallen in the standings, and the Cubs are in first place with the Brewers in second. So, will that be how the, the, uh, the, the teams shake out uh, at the end of the season? Who knows? But at this point, at least, the, that ELO model is doing a better job of representing the relative rankings of those teams um, than the actual win-losses did. And that's, of course, because we don't have all the information about the quality of the team until the season is done. So that's one model, right, ELO. Another model that was developed by Bill James back, I think, in the early 80s, was based on the win-loss uh, win records of individual teams. That if you know a team's win-loss record and the other team's win-loss record, you can use those two averages to predict, with a certain probability, which team will go on to win the game. When those models are being developed, they assume that we have a lot of information about, um, about those teams, that we know the true winning percentage of those teams. That's really hard on, say, day one, <laughs> um, where everybody is zero and zero, um, to, to kind of estimate or to kind of extrapolate out what will that team's true win-loss record be at the end of the season. And so uh, something I want to show you is if we go to the Riffamonis website, uh, the 2018, oh, yep, 2018 All-Star break. Um, in this initial description that I put up, I have uh, the Bill James formula for uh, predicting the probability that a team will beat another team based on their win-loss record. Based on their win-loss record. So we can use this formula to go ahead and predict which team will win. So for today's demo, what I want to do is implement this model. So we have a couple questions though. What do we use as the winning percentage for uh, the two teams? So I think there's a couple different options. So one um, would be to do it based on the record of that team to that point in the season. I think that's the most informative, right? That would be, um, say I'm a gambler and I want to bet on uh, the team and see you know, who's the favorite. I want to know where they are to this point in the season. A second approach would be to say, well, let's use last year's record and see if last year's records can help us to do the estimation of the probability of a team winning uh, the games this season. And then a third approach that we kind of try is a bit academic, uh, and this is really how it's been implemented um, when people have been testing and de uh, developing this win percentage model, is to use the record at the end of the season. Now, I don't know the record of the Cubs or the Brewers or the Cardinals at the end of the season, at the end of the season, because that's still two or three months away. Um, but we can still use it as a way to validate that we're kind of doing this model uh, in the right approach. Okay, so again, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to add this to our data analysis, and we're going to see how this approach compares to the ELO-based model. So we'll go back to our finder, and I'm going to go ahead and double-click on um, my rproj 
file. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is to go back over to my repository and I'm going to start a new issue. So for today, I need to, uh, so this is, uh, what am I calling these things? Sorry, I'm giving it a, a real title. So I'm going to create a new issue and I'm going to call it Analyze uh, Win Percentage Model Relative to 538 ELO Model. So what I need to do is I need to calculate the um, winning percentage for each team prior to the start of the day's game. I also need to calculate the winning percentage for each team at the end of the season and calculate the winning percentage for each team at the end of the last season. And then we need to integrate uh, the, or sorry, uh, we need to integrate, yeah, the winning percentages into our data frame with the 538 model. And we need to calculate the the, um, I'm going to call it WP uh, probability um, for each game. And what else do we need to do? Um, we're also then going to want to plot the um, ability of, we'll call this the model, uh, the WP model um, uh, uh, act. Uh, uh, to predict favorite over time and then we're going to plot the um, observed versus the expected um, uh, probabilities for the WP models and the 538 ELO model. Okay, simple right? All right, I'm going to submit this as an issue, and uh, we'll get going. I'm going to go to my terminal, and I'm going to create a new branch. So I'm going to say git checkout dash b um, validate WP model and excellent. So I am going to then also um, I'm going to open up my uh, analysis.r file and we're going to start to modify this to bring in a new code for our winning percentage data get organized here a little bit. So to remember where we were, um, we read in the game data. We then made this data frame that had favorite win prob game data. Um, and we then created this data frame that had the season, date, team one, team two, their names, the favorite, whether the favorite won by the 538 model, whether the fa and then the, the probability of the favorite by the 538 model. So missing from this are the scores of the game. So we're going to need those scores to calculate uh, the winning percentage, the, the, the winning average um, for um, each team over time. So I'm going to go ahead and add score one, score two, and I need to go ahead and uh, run all this. 
and this should work again. I've, I've closed our studio and reopened it, and hopefully it will continue to work because we want this to be reproducible. There we go. And so then if we look at uh, favorite win percentage, win prop, sorry, um, we see now we have the season, the date, team one, team two, score one, score two, favorite, and then the prob with the one they won in the probability. Um, I'm going to push this to the side because what we want to do now is again we need to calculate the winning percentage um, for each day of the season for each team the winning percentage at the end of the season and the winning percentage um, at the end of the previous season okay and so I'm gonna call the day-by-day -day winning percentage our wins losses live that's kind of our live record we're not capping it or setting it at a specific value. So we're going to say win losses live. And, and again, I'm going to, I'll leave that there, but I'm going to comment it out because as I develop it, I really like to um, see the output as I develop my pipeline. And so I'm going to do um, favorite win prob. I'm going to pipe that um, to do a mutate. And we're going to um, determine who is the winner and loser for each game because again what I want to do is for each as we go through the season I want to keep track of the number of wins and the number of total games each team has played by day and so I'm going to then say win one equals score one greater than score two win two is score two greater than score one and then um, who is the winning team? So we'll do team win one equals um, paste. So what I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new column that pastes together uh, the team name and then whether or not they won. So what I want to do is I want to get to a point where I have a data frame where I have the date, the name of the team, and whether or not they won on that day. Because then what I can do is I can, I can take that data frame, I can group by the team and by the season, and I can then also arrange the data by date and then use kind of a cumulative mean function to see what is the average um, or the, the, you know, the average number of games by date that um, an individual team has won. Okay? So then if I know the record uh, for each team at any given time, I can then join that back to my large favorite win probability data frame to see the average, or the winning average, um, at that point in the season. And so I've got these two columns, right, or I guess four columns, right? I've got the names of the two teams, and I've got the win, you know, whether or not they won. And so I want to kind of push that all together. Um, and the way that I'm going to do it is that to, to paste the two columns, two sets of columns together, and then I'm going to um, gather it to make it tidy, and then I'm going to split it up back apart. And so you'll see as I go through here. So we'll do a um, paste, uh, team one, um, win one, a sep equals underscore. So it's important to give it a separator that we can come back and separate it based on. Uh, team win two is paste, team two, win two, sep equals underscore. And so if we look at this, we see what we get here is that we have um, team um, win one. So we see the, the Padres, false. Um, and then if we looked at team win two, it would be the Cubs, true. Okay. And so we're going to now gather um, to create a, um, a, a, a column called one, two. And so that's going to be the key um, where it's going to be team win one, team win two. And then we're going to have um, the, the second column be um, team win, team win one, team win two. And so what this will do is this will, um, this is kind of a, a dummy variable of one, two. And what it's going to have is going to, it's going to have team win one, team win two as the alternating values throughout the data frame. And then the, the, that's the key. And the value 
is going to be uh, this pasted together thing. So the SDP false, SFG false. Okay. So if we look at this, um, we see that we now have. Um, let me let me make this a little bit wider, and we'll run this again. So what we see now is that we have one two. So this is team one. Um, if we were to look at the end of this. We then see that we have team two, and then we have the name of the team as well as whether or not they won. Okay. So from that, then we will then um, separate. We're going to separate that uh, team win column into uh, team and win. And then we're going to say our separator is the underscore. Okay. And so what we see now is that we still have this one, two, but that's really not relevant. <laughs> um, we have the team and whether or not they won. Okay. So <coughs> um, we, we, our, our data frame now is significantly larger. It's got 433,000 rows, whereas I believe if we were to look at um, the dim of favoring prop, it's half the size, right? So we've basically doubled the number of rows because now each team in each game um, has um, two rows, has its own row, right? So, um, so this game has been doubled so that both SDP and CHG have a Boolean value to indicate whether or not the team won. Okay. So we've separated that. Um, the other thing to note is that, um, unfortunately, when we separated it, that win came out as a character. Um, we can then say, I believe we can do convert equals true. And we should now get a li um, logical. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Otherwise, when we do things like our means and sums and things like that, it's not going to know what to do with the character value. We're going to now arrange uh, the data frame uh, by date. And so now we see um, those 1871 games. Um, and you see this now. So we have Fort Wayne and Cleveland. Um, I don't know what WS is in Atlanta and so forth. Okay, So we've now sorted the data frame by date. And now we're going to group the data uh, by season and team. And we're now going to do uh, mutate wins, uh, losses, and average. Okay. And so if we were to, to, to do wins, we could do um, cum sum um, win. And we could then do losses, cum sum, not win, exclamation point win. And average is wins divided by wins plus losses. Okay. So, of course, there's many ways we could do that. We could have, instead of doing losses, we could have said games, and we could have used the end function, whatever. Um, we'll get the right answer. So if we run this now, object abg not found. Ah, I put in two equal signs. Normally I only put in one equal sign when I'm supposed to do two. Never have I ever put two when I'm supposed to put one. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, so to, to make it easier to see, um, I'm going to pipe this, and we're going to select um, team equals CHC and season equals uh, 2018. Why isn't it doing that? All right. I must have a typo in here somewhere. Um, so team. Hmm. 
Ah, sorry, this should be filter, not select. And so this is uh, the Chicago Cubs and what they've done over the 2018 season. And if we do this, and let's um, now let's select date team one, team two, and we'll do wins, losses, AVG. Okay, so we now have um, the development of the team's record over the course of the season. So this shows the first week or so where the Cubs played the Florida Marlins, uh, Cincinnati, and Milwaukee and Pittsburgh, right? So um, at about 10 games into the season, they were 500. It took the Cubs a while to get going this year, okay? So again, this is the Chicago Cubs record for every given day um, in the 2018 season. But the other thing you should note is that this is the record after um, that game was played. So on the morning of March 29th, the Cubs were 0-0. Zero and zero. On the morning of April 10th, the Cubs were 5-4. and four. So we need to add a lag to indicate um, the record at the beginning of the day. I don't want to know the record at the end of the day. I want the record at the beginning of the day. And so over here, we can add um, a function for lag. So there's a lag and a lead function in dplyr. Okay. So if we run this, and um, again, if we do uh, team, I did select again, filter. And season is 2018. Okay. And I'm gonna just copy this over here because uh, this will drive me nuts. So one of the things we see, and I'm going to add my filter uh, to do date, uh, and let's do team one, team two, uh, win, sorry, wins, losses, AVG. Okay. Evaluation, not. Hmm. Ah. Select, not filter. <laughs> All right. So we see that it puts in an NA for that first game. And so we saw that the Cubs won their first game. And so um, they were 1 and 0, right? Um, at the start of the second game on March 30th. So what we want to do is to replace those NAs with zeros. And so what we can do is if we do na.omit, we can wrap that around uh, these two. And if we run that, it's going to complain because the column wins must be length 31, not 30. Okay. And so the problem with what's happening is if we were to do, um, say we do uh, x is 1 to uh, 10, 20 and I do lag x, I now have that that uh, na in the first spot. If I do na.omit lag x, I now have a vector that's one unit shorter. So what I need to do is I can add, I can do c0, comma, na admit that. And that's what I want to do. And so we're going to do c0, comma, that. And this should work. Although I think for my inf, it's going to give me an NA. And so what I want to do is, um, hmm, let me think. How do we get that not to be an NAN? Um, let's let's do the same thing we did up here with the wins and losses, where we do NA dot omit that that. 
Let's see if that works. That's great. So that replaces that with a zero, and we've got what we want. Okay. So now let's uh, simplify this data frame. Up. Oh, um, so we're going to simplify this. Uh, we, as we look at this, we see that we currently have the data frame as grouped, and so we need to ungroup this by season and team. So we're going to do ungroup and we want to select we want to get the season the team the date um, and the AVG yeah I don't think we need the wins or losses um, and that should work and um, let's see what this looks like and so that's the AVG over time um, if I pipe this to get my cubs, uh, I guess I don't need this. If that works. I could test this by um, doing print n equals inf, and this should tell me that the cubs. Um, Winning percentage right now is 587, and if you go to ESPN.com and look at the current standings, it is 587. So this all works great. So now we have, well, now we have this variable. So now we have this variable win losses live that we can use to join in to our larger data frame of game data to, or our, sorry, our favorite win probability uh, data frame to add in a column where we can then get in the, um, the predictions based on the live wins and losses. So the next thing I need to add is um, the season uh, win losses. Okay. And for this, we're also going to bring in uh, favorite win prob. And actually, um, most of this is all going to be um, fairly similar. So we're going to um, basically copy all this down. And so what this does, if you remember, um, again, I'm going to just to develop the data frame, I'm going to comment out the variable name, get rid of that pipe, and run this to see what it looks like. But you'll remember we have the season, the date, the team one, team two, um, but this junk uh, really doesn't matter. What really matters is the team and what they did on that date in that season. Okay. And so we'll pipe that then. Um, uh, so we've got that. that, that's the logical, just to double check. Um, We'll then group by, we're going to group by the team and the season. And so that way, we, again, we've got this big data frame. Um, we're going to group by the team and the season. And then we're going to summarize the current AVG for the current average of the current season. And we're going to do mean um, wins, uh, win, sorry. And so if we run that, we then see each team and um, the season and the current average, right? So again, if we do uh, filter, team equals CHC, we see the Cubs uh, records um, over the first however many years, right? So that's the current season. Now, I'd like to get the past season. And you'll see that we currently have this being grouped by team. Um, and so what we then want to do is to do mutate, uh, because we now want to make um, the average for the last season. Okay, So we'll do prev avg. And this is going to, again, be um, using that lag. And so we can do prev um, 
uh, got prevav already, um, and we're going to do um, c something <laughs> na dot omit lag current avg and uh, so the question then is what do we want to put in here uh, for that for that lag so you could imagine um, if this is 1871 we don't have the record for the teams in 1870 because they didn't exist and similarly as they went through expansion and added teams say like the Arizona Diamondbacks um, that team didn't have a record uh, the year before they existed so I'm gonna just put in 0.5 um, for to give them the benefit of the doubt typically expansion teams really suck <laughs> and maybe we should make this like 0.3 but um, you can change that in your own code and, and see if it really matters So let's run this and see what we get. And so what you'll see is that um, up here, um, Anaheim had 432 um, in 1961. So they were one of the expansion teams in the early 60s. And so then um, 432 is their next year, uh, record is the record for the 1962, which would be the previous. And the previous for, say, 1960 should be 0.5. And so that all looks great. Um, this is still being grouped by team, so I'm going to ungroup this, and that's all good. And we now need to assign this to win losses season. Excellent. So now we have our win losses as we go through the season, the win losses for the end of that season, and the win losses for the previous season. What we want to do is take these three pieces of information now and fold them into our favorite win prob data frame so that we have all three or all four models with the 538 ELO model next to each other in the same data frame so we can easily compare them to each other. So now what we want to do is we need to join in the win um, losses live and win losses um, season into uh, favorite win prob. Okay. And so dplyr has some really nice tools for joining different data frames that we're going to make use of here. So we're going to do favorite win prob and we'll do an inner join. Uh, where we're going to join fav win prob with win losses live. And we're going to do it by, um, what are we going to do it by? We're going to do it by team uh, one equals team. So team one column from favorite win prob and the team column from our win losses live. We're also going to add in, uh, have it join on season and date. We're also, we're going to copy this because we're also going to join then uh, team two. Okay. And so at this point, ah, what did I do wrong? Um, oh, this needs a C. Um, all right. So now we have season, date, team one, team two, score one, score two, the favorite 538 one, um, and then the averages for those two teams um, at that point in the season. Okay, so um, when the Cubs and Padres played, their records or winning averages were 408 and 587, uh, respectively. Now we want to use those winning averages to calculate the win probability based on uh, their winning percentages. So we'll do a mutate uh, win prob for team one and win prob for team two. Similar to what we've done elsewhere, we're going to want to then add in whether or not the favorite um, win prob um, WP, I'm going to call it win prob live one and fav WP live uh, prob. Okay, And so uh, here, to get the win prob, 
what we'd like to do is to say get WP and we're gonna for this we're gonna give it um, what are we gonna give it we're gonna give it AVG dot X AVG dot Y and here we can do one minus win prob one and here we're gonna do if else um, win prob one greater than win prob two um, then then team one was the favorite so then we want to score one greater than score two and otherwise it's going to be score two greater than score one so this is similar to what we've done before um, and so here we're going to again do if else uh, win prob one is greater than win prob two then it's the favorite we want to return that win probability and otherwise when team two is the, pro this is the favorite and we want to send back its probability so win prob two okay. so you're probably saying pat <laughs> what's this get wp function we haven't defined that yet and in fact if we run this it's going to complain could not find function get wp so we need to define get wp i like to put all my functions up at the top of my code. And so we need a function get WP and I'm going to give it an A and B um, as the two averages that are coming in from um, down below where I ran my mutate function. Right. So if I give get WP two averages I want it to tell me the, the probability that the first average is going to win. Okay. And so you recall um, here is the formula for calculating the win probability. And so we want to put this in now. And so uh, it's going to be A times 1 minus B divided by um, A times 1 minus B uh, plus B times 1 minus A. Okay. So this is the win probability. Um, if we run this, so if we do get WP and say we give it 0.6 and say 0.5, then the probability that um, that the team with the 0.6 will win is 0.6. Um, 0.55, they'll say it's like 0.55. Um, Great. So something we might notice, though, is if we do get WP of 0, 0, so say it's the first day of the season, it's going to give us a, not a number. If we do get WP 1, 1, it's also going to give us not a number. Um, those would generally happen on like the first or second days of the season. Um, if we do get WP 0, 1, then it does 0, get WP 1, 0, that's going to give you one. So we need to add some logic here to say if um, if a equals zero and b equals zero, uh, I think we want the double ampersands. Um, so if that happens, then I'm gonna I'm gonna make the call that it should return 0.5. Okay, else. Uh, return this value. So again, if we run this, and we do get WP 0, 0, it gets 0.5, right? And if we do 1, it's still 0. If we do 1, 1, it's still not a number. So we need to then add some logic. Um, so I'm going to copy that. So if both of those are 0, or both of them are equal to one. Then it should return 0.5. So if we do oh, get WP one one point five, get WP zero zero point five, get WP zero one zero, um, and if we do 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. 0.5, okay? And if we give it, say, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 
point seven. Okay. Excellent. So we have a function now that works and that we can use um, to calculate the winning percentage. Um, where were we? All right. So we have this as our way of calculating the winning percentage. So if we run this now, do we get an error? So we see now that we've got uh, win prob 1, 327, win prob 2, 637. Let's put these numbers in just to double check. Uh, 0 0.408, 0 0.587 gives us 0 0.326. That's great. Um, I'm going to run this again just to make sure it behaved correctly um, at the tail. Hmm. So we're still getting these NANs for 0 and 0. And I think um, one of the problems here is that we ran get WP where we gave everything, both vectors, into WP. And it's really not set up for vectoring. And so what we want to do instead is map. So if we do map DFR, um, and we then say uh, we're going to send to map AVGX, AVGY, and we're going to then give it get WP. And so what map DFR does is it takes, uh, it steps through these two vectors, uh, AVX and AVGY, the two columns from our data frame, and for each pair of values, it's going to run those into get WP, and it's going to return it as a data frame. Okay, And it's basically just going to be a single column data frame. Um, actually, we won't want DFR, we want double. So DBL. So map DBL doesn't return data frame, returns a double, which is a, a numerical vector. So if we run this, Hmm, result one is not a length one atomic vector. Hmm. Win prob one. Hmm. So I used map instead of map two. <laughs> so map is when you have a single vector map 2 is when you have two vectors, and then I think it's pmap when you have any number of vectors that you're feeding into a function. So now if we run this, that works. And if we then um, look at the tail, see if this is behaving. Ah. Ah, Why did I put in a zero? <laughs> we now see that we get the right result of 0.5 and 0.5, okay? So again, we use this map uh, to DPL to take two columns and for each value, each row in those two columns, to send those to get WP and then to return that as a double vector, okay? These map functions are really powerful um, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can output the data. So we're going to pipe this then into a select because we don't want all of this information necessarily. So we're going to turn the season, date, um, team one, team two, score one, score two, uh, fave, 538 one, fave, 538 prob, and um, we want fave WP live, one and fave um, WP live prop. Okay. So we run all this. We now get um, season, date, team one, team two, the score of those games, whether the favorite by the 538 model won, the probability, favorite by the, the live win percentage won. Um, and the probability. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this, but we're going to join in um, 
the win losses uh, season um, and into so I'm going to take this out um, into favorite win prob. And so what I need to do is I need to update this to say this is we're going to write over what we currently had. So that favorite win prob now has those columns. So now we want to add four more columns. Two for the prediction based on the current season, end of the season record, and two for the end of the previous season uh, record. Okay, So it's going to be very similar. Um, I'm going to copy these first couple of lines down and work off of these. So um, win losses live, we want win losses season. Um, and so this We'll join this. Oh. Um, date is missing from right hand side. Win losses season. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't want to join by date because I'm just looking at the season, right? So win losses season doesn't have a date column because it's just looking at that season. So I'm going to remove the date column. And we now see that we have added current average, previous average, current average, previous average. So X are the columns for um, team one, and the Ys are the columns for team two. Okay. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add another mutate. So we'll do um, winprob one equals, um, so I'm going to live on the edge again and copy these down. And we're going to do um, this. And remember, it's pre current av and prev-av. So I'm going to copy these. Um, so this is going to be our winprob1, winprob2. Um, and then this is going to be wp going to do current and then WP current and this then is going to be winprob1 bam 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 I think that's all good and I'm going to copy these down oops copy those down and instead of current average, we're going to do, um, what is it here? Prev average. Okay. And then this is going to be WP prev. All right. And if we run this, we now see that we've got um, this current average those four columns we added, um, win probs, our favorite one, uh, favorite probability, favorite one, and favorite probability from the current season as well as from the previous season. I'm going to then select um, similar to what we had up here. So I'm going to copy this select column, the select uh, command down, but we're going to add in fave wp uh, current one fave wp um, current prob fave wp prev one and fave wp prev prob so now we have our data frame looking like we want it to and we have it stored as favorite win prob i'm going to go ahead and revisit our checklist so we've calculated the winning percentages. Uh, we've integrated that into our data frame with the 538 model. We've also calculated the winning percentage model probability for each game. We now want to make the plots. And um, we'll return to our studio here. And um, to calculate our overall winning percentage, um, actually, we're not quite ready for that. 
we want to get our data into a more tidy format. So the idea of tidiness is that our data um, in individual columns represents the same type of data. And so um, I want, I would like to have a column that says model. So it might be 538, WP Live, WP Current, WP Prev, um, and then the probability, and then whether or not the favorite one. So instead of having these eight columns that are very difficult to compare across, I want to have um, three columns that tell us the model, whether or not the favorite won, and then the probability that the favorite team won. And so we saw this earlier when we were calculating um, when we were calculating the um, season averages, the, the winning percentage across the season. So we now want to make the data frame tidy. Okay. And so we're going to take favorite win model, and we're going to mutate. And I'm going to create a column called FTE for 538 because our column names, they don't, it's not ideal to have those be numerical. So I'll have 5TE and I'm going to again do my paste where I paste together uh, fav 538 uh, 1, fav uh, 538 prob, sep is the underscore. And, oops. I'll then also add WP Live, um, where we'll do paste, WP Live, no, um, sorry, fave, WP Live, uh, one, fave, WP Live, uh, prob, sep is the underscore, comma, and then WP current, paste fave wp current uh, one fave wp current prob sep equals underscore and then wp prev is paste uh, fave wp prev one fave wp prev probability sep is underscore so these are our four models. That ends our mutate. We then run this, and we now get um, these extra columns um, that, that we can't quite see. Um, so if we um, select for um, FTE, WP Live, WP Current, WP Prev. Ah. We then get these columns, right? And so what we're going to do now is like we did before with gather, we're going to gather these four columns together and then we're going to separate them based on the underscore where the first column will be the one and WN <laughs> and the second column will be the probability. Great. So we will do gather, uh, I'm sorry, um, so before I, before I gather, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove um, those FAV columns that we had um, taking up a bunch of space. So I'm going to do select, I'm going to do minus, starts with, and then quote FAV. And so when we run this, we'll see that we no longer have those FAV columns, right? And so it's, it's already a bit more compact. We'll then do gather. Um, so we'll gather um, uh, to create uh, a column model. And then we'll create uh, one prob. And the columns that we're going to gather together are FTE, WP Live, WP Current, and WP Prev. All right, so if we fire that up, we now see that we've got basically the same thing, but now we have the column for FTE, WP Live, WP Current, WP Prev, as well as the one probability. And now we want to separate, uh, we want to separate um, one prob into one and prob. And we're going to separate on 
uh, the underscore. And so this now gives us our tidy data frame, where for every season, every game, every pair of teams, our, we have a score, the model, um, whether the favorite won, and the probability that the favorite would win. And so I'm going to save this now as my tidy win prob. Okay. Now I'm ready to revisit this overall win prob, where if I take tidy win prob, and we pipe that to uh, a group by um, group by season, and we want to group by model. I'm sorry, we don't want to group by season, we want to group by model because we want to look at the overall win percentage across all years. So model, group by model, and then we're going to do mutate, um, and I'm going to call this, um, I'm sorry, not mutate, I'm going to do um, summarize mean equals mean uh, win, uh, one. That's not good. Um, ah, so we have this problem again <laughs> where we did the separate, uh, but it turned them into characters. So up here, we want to do convert equals true. We rerun that. Look at tidy win percentage, and we now see that that's formatted correctly. And if we run this, we now see. Uh, the overall uh, fraction of time, fraction of games, where the favorite actually won. So if we use the current season, at the end of the season, the probability, um, or the win-loss records, to calculate our probabilities, that gives us the best model. Of course, that does us no good, because I can't see into the future. <laughs> um, and so we'll call this, then, the overall win prob, and we'll use that as we go along. So now we want to plot the fraction of games that the favorite has won over the history of baseball. We're going to group by season and by model. And we're going to then summarize um, the fraction that the favorite team won. And so this is going to be mean of 1. Okay, So it's basically the same thing we did here. But here we're also uh, grouping by the season. Um, I'm going to do an ungroup uh, to liberate that. And then we're going to pipe that into ggplot. So x, um, y, uh, fraction, favorite one, which is that there. Uh, we're going to group by model. We're going to color by model. Yep. And our um, to modify our geom h line, we're going to give it data, which will be our overall win prob. Our AES is going to be um, y-intercept. Here will be uh, mean. And group will be model. Color will be model. And we can get rid of this color light gray. And our geom line, theme classic. Uh, our titles are going to have a bit of a problem. So let's just run this and see what we get. Eh, column model is unknown. Um, so let's see where it gagged here. If we run that, model unknown. Um, ah, we gave it fraction win prob. We want to give it tidy win prob. So we run that. We see what we've been looking at, uh, where we've got now our four models, FTE, WP current, WP live, WP prev, along with um, the four horizontal lines. And the data look pretty messy, but on the whole, as we saw, that the WP current, again, where you're using the winning averages um, to calculate the win probabilities, but the averages come from the end of the season to calculate in season, um, does the best. And actually, that the using the previous year uh, does the worst, <laughs> um, and the live um, comes in third. Okay. And so for our labels, we can throw in season, fraction of games one. Uh, we'll say that the 538 model, um, uh, let's see, 
I'm going to get rid of some of this. So the, um, the winning percentage model can outperform the 538 ELO model if it uses uh, the end of season winning averages. Okay, and we kind of talked about how that's kind of useless. <laughs> um, so if we run this, um, let me just throw in a line break here just to uh, help it to format a little bit nicer. There we go. Um, I can also add in um, scale uh, color manual and we can then say name equals null that will get rid of this legend title of model we can then say uh, breaks equals uh, I'm going to put these in alphabetical order because R does weird things with factors like this FTE um, WP current WP live WP prev okay and then our labels we'll say C uh, 538 um, WP current WP live and WP previous okay. and then our colors um, I'm gonna do something a little uh, funny here uh, we're gonna use a package called the Wes Anderson palette and uh, there's a palette so this is a palette, set of palettes that are colors inspired by Wes Anderson movies. And I kind of like the way they look better than the default ggplot colors, um, but you know, to each his own. Uh, so I'm gonna do Wes palette uh, Darjeeling 2. Um, if you Google and go to um, R Wes Anderson palettes, You get this GitHub account, uh, GitHub repository from Karthik Ram, um, where he shows various Wes Anderson palettes. It is in CRAN, so you can install it through our studio. Um, we need to add our library call, uh, and you can see what the different palettes look like here. So up at the top, I'm going to add library Wes Anderson, and let's see. Here we go. Oops. Oh, this should be values. Ah. ah, palette. Two T's. And so you see the colors are a little bit more not so in your face. Uh, and looks looks nice. Of course, you can play with that and whatever. Let's move on. So I'm going to skip the point where we did the binomial fits, and instead what I'd like to do is to plot these four models uh, with the predicted and observed um, uh, winning percentages on the y-axis and not worry about uh, the binomial fit. We've done that before, um, and let's just move on um, to generating that plot. So we're ready now to go ahead and generate this plot comparing the different models and how they perform at different predicted uh, win probabilities. We're going to scrap most of what we have over here because I'm not going to go back and do that binomial fitting. Um, you can do that on your own. Um, really all that gains us is the cloud along the 45 degree line and also each of our different models is going to have a different sized cloud because they're predicting um, different probabilities and so that just gets kind of messy. So we're going to make, trying to finish off here with a simple plot, again, where our x-axis contains the predicted win probability and the y-axis has the actual win probability. And I'm going to do this all straight to um, a ggplot pipe. So we'll uh, use this tidy win prob uh, where we're going to mutate um, our prob uh, to have only two significant digits. To simplify things, we're going to then group by um, that probability, and we're also going to group by uh, the model type because we want to know the uh, predicted and observed win probabilities for um, each model as well. Excellent. So if we run this, 
Um, oh, I still have that in here. And so we want to replace this with um, one. We then see that we've got all of our models, our four different models, the games that had those probabilities, the wins, and the observed um, win probabilities. We can then kick this out to ggplot with our aesthetic, our x, we're going to plot the probability, the y, we're going to plot the observed, we're going to group by model, and we're going to color by model. And we can then do geome uh, AB line, uh, AES uh, intercept equals zero, slope equals one. I'm going to do color uh, equals uh, gray. And we will then add geome line. And let's see what this looks like. Great. So we see again our predicted prob win probability, the observed win probability, this gray line is if the models performed perfectly. Uh, you know, that green line for the current season prediction looks really good. Um, there is a fair amount of variation uh, that I suspect would go outside of the cloud if we were to plot that. Um, but it doesn't, maybe it's a little under-biased, um, but, you know, perhaps if we <laughs> averaged out the probabilities of the 538 and the current season win probability, um, we'd be right on that line. But again, this is kind of like a academic exercise because we can't predict today or Thursday's game based on the records at the end of the season. It's just, we don't have a time machine, sorry. Uh, if you're out there, uh, time travelers, let us know what the final season win probabilities are. But then of course, we would actually know who wins Thursday because time travel. Anyway. Uh, so let's make this look a little bit nicer. And so I'm going to add my uh, theme uh, classic. And I'm going to add uh, my scale colors. Let's see what this looks like. Looks pretty good. We need to add our labels. Predicted win probability, y would be our observed win probability. And then our, um, our main title is going to be um, the 538 and um, uh, WP current models perform or generate more reliable um, win probabilities than the uh, WP Live or previous um, models. Excellent. Let's uh, add another line break in here. And I'm going to add um, a subtitle to say that this is based on all data uh, since 1871. We run this, we get a um, nice looking plot. Um, again, you can play with the colors if you want. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this looks, and it's kind of cool um, to see that this current season win probability model that goes out. Um, you know, the idea of using the current season as it, as it develops win probability um, doesn't do very well. <laughs> um, and of course, that's in part because the model was derived assuming that we had exhaustive information about the performance of that team uh, that year. And so, um, and it's interesting to see that last year's team's records don't really um, indicate how this team's this year's team records are going to fare. So uh, that's interesting. Um, and certainly uh, it's been a lot of fun to look at how this win probability model works with the 538 model. So stick around for the next uh, um, 
module that we go through where we're going to use the bedding line data. We don't have as much data going back to 1871, say, but at the same time, it's another version of modeling wins and losses based on the wisdom of uh, people that are putting the money where their mouth is, so to speak. So until then, uh, keep playing with this data and this code um, and see if you can come up with your own model, perhaps, that you could then dovetail in with what we've already done.